will discuss the topic Verilog abstraction levels. In my earlier lectures, I have discussed these topics individually in an elaborate manner. But I thought of providing all the four levels of abstraction at one place. As all of you know, Verilog is basically a hardware description language and it is used to describe the functionality of hardware. And you also know that different styles of description are used by the people. And these abstraction models are given some level to provide some order. So if you consider the modeling or abstraction levels of this design, there are four design models or abstractions provided by, supported by the very long. The four design models are switch level model, gate level model, it is also popularly known as a structural model, data flow model and a behavioral model. Among these models, switch modeling is the lowest level of modeling and the behavioral modeling is considered as the highest level or top level modeling. There are 14 logic gates and 12 switches predefined in the Verilog HDL to provide the gate and switch level modeling facility. Modeling with logic gates and switches has the advantages. Gates provide a much closer one-to-one -one mapping between the actual circuit and the model. There is no continuous assignment equivalent to the bidirectional transfer gate. This is very important because in data flow model we use continuous assignment. So this is the limitation in the data flow model. There is no continuous assignment equivalent to the bidirectional transfer gate. We have to use this only as a gate at gate level modeling only. So among these models, no model is considered as a better or best model than the other. Many of the industry people say that a wise designer will use mix of these models because the ultimate goal will be the efficiency of the design, error free design or bug free design. So an intelligent designer will use mix of these models. In the digital design, the term RTL is very common, which means the register transfer level. RTL register transfer level. This is used for Verilog description that uses a combination of behavioral and data flow constructs. The designer can use both behavioral constructs as well as data flow model construction constructs and this will be mostly used to design complex hardware and is also acceptable logic synthesis too. We will discuss this RTL model at the end of this lecture. At present let us start with switch level modeling. This is the lowest level of abstraction provided by Verilog. A module can be implemented in terms of switches, storage nodes and the interconnections between them. Switch level description implements switches. So those who are familiar with <coughs> CMOS, they may be knowing that a transistor, either PMOS or NMOS or CMOS transistor, they will act as switches. So in this model, mostly we use CMOS, NMOS transistors. So that's why it is called switch level description. So this switch level description is usually implemented in very large scale integrated circuit layouts, especially while during the layouts, this model is preferred. Fortunately, Verilog has built-in statements such as NMOS, PMOS and CMOS, whereas VHDL does not have. VHDL has no such feature. Then let us see how we describe the NMOS and PMOS switches. So Verilog has a built-in code for NMOS and PMOS. How do you denote them? 
for example here you can see n mass this is optional some n1 n mass n1 some parameters like a drain source gate so n1 is optional either you can write or need not write doesn't matter so this is invoking a kind of invo invocation or calling or using n mass switch drain source gate similarly i can also write this in the code form how do you write this suppose n mass is the transistor n1 o1 output 1 i1 input 1 i2 input 2. so these two are inputs this is an output for our n mass similarly for p mass i can have same p mass p1 drain source gate this can also be write in the code form as a p mass p1 o1 output 1 i1 i2 are inputs 1 and 2 so in order to elaborate this let us consider an example so by using one p mass and n mass we have constructed an inverter you can see clearly here so this is the input for the inverter and this is the output here the upper transistor is the p mass transistor the lower transistor is the n mass transistor here i have applied the source vdd here it is applied ground let us see now how do we write this module as you know already the name of the module is input y is the output a is the input as you see in the diagram so what is the what are the directions of the ports input a a is the input port y is the output port and what are these you have seen this during the data types very log data types so supply 1 means it indicates the vdd similarly supply 0 means it indicates ground then how do you invoke or how do you write this pmos transistor how do you describe this pmos transistor pmos p1 is y output vdd a you can see here for pmos y is the output a is the input ground v sorry vdd is the supply for the nmos transistor below here so i have ground y same output a is the input end module so once you execute this you can see that for a value of input 0 output will be 1 and for a value of 0 the output will be 1 for a value of 1 the output will be 0 this is an input so this is a simple case of switch level model like this you can construct any CMOS based switches or circuits but the only thing is it is not very frequently used like your RTL model it is not very popular next second model as I have already explained in the earlier lectures is gate level modeling as you know the guest level model is also popularly known as structural modeling so at gate level the circuit is described in term in terms of gates as you know and the gate or gate we also call them as primitives as you have seen hardware design at this level is intuitive for a user <coughs> here there is a one-to-one -one correspondence that is the advantage so whenever i use the word primitive and means this corresponds to one hardware gate whenever i use the primitive nand means it corresponds to one nand gate that is one-to-one -one correspondence is available between the logic circuit diagram and the Verilog description. In the Verilog description, suppose I use NAND. In the logic circuit diagram, it represents one NAND gate. So, Verilog HDL supports basic logic gates. What are these? As you have already seen, R gate, AND gate, XR gate, XNR gate, etc. Also, it supports two other buffer and NOT gate primitives. So these gates are instantiated means called or invoked during the design so by instantiating these gates we build the logic circuits so i have explained in my earlier lecture these things in detail so the port order for each primitive will be normally we use first output port then followed by the input ports so you have an example and instantiations let us see Visual module name of the module input one input two output input one input two. so how do we write this this instantiation 
and means it represents the AND gate. It's optional. I have given some name A1 out in one that is input one input two. This is out. Similarly, call the AND gate. In A1 is the name output I N1 I N2 out OR gate NOR gate X OR gate X NOR gate and N mod. So in this program, in this Verilog code, I am calling various AND gate various basic gates like AND gate, NAND gate, OR gate, NOR gate, XOR gate, XNOR gate and we see take the output through simulation. So this is a simple case of a multiplex. Let us take a multiplexer example, a 2 to 1 multiplexer example through gate level. So that means to implement this we require the logic diagram for this. First let us understand A, B are the inputs, S is the select line and the output is a dot s complement plus b dot s a b are the inputs s is the select line so what will be the gate diagram as a gate diagram if you see you can design or you can write the two by one max in terms of the basic logic gates i am using one and gate here another and gate not gate or gate. that means there are two and gates one not gate and one or gate which this is also you have seen in earlier lecture so input a input b s is the select line so why is this so how do you write so what are the gates that are to be instantiated i have to instantiate one in odd gate two and gates one or gate let us do this through the verilog code same as usual module my max two is to one a b or s or inputs a b s or inputs why is the output i have written clearly here output while input abs while you know inter internal connections or internal variables as s1 a1 b1 and first not s1 comma s because this is the not gate this is the internal connection or internal wire internal wire s1 so what is the output for this not gate s1 is the output s is the input so we write not clearly not instantiation of the gate S1 is the output, S is the input. Similarly, AND1 because there are two AND gates, I have called AND1 AND2 AND gate 1 for this A1 is the output, A, S1 are input. Similarly, for AND2, B1 is the output, B and S are inputs. Like this, final R, R gate instantiation, Y is the final output, A1 and B1 are the inputs, end mod, end module. So, this is the implementation of a 2 by 1 max using gate level modeling so the next one is data flow modeling in the data flow modeling as you know as the designer knows how the data is flowing through various gates various components or sub modules of a hardware that's why he will prefer to write the flow of the data from starting to ending using a simple construct known as assign so this is an also popularly known as continuous assignment model assignment model so Verilog uses the keyword assign to denote a continuous signal assignment so after this keyword an assignment is made using the equal to symbol this is equal to symbol assign so when I write a equal to b that is a is assigned B. So that is the value of B is assigned to A. A equal to B means that is the left hand side A of the assignment is the target signal and must be a net type. It's normally known as net type. Whereas A is equal to B. B is the right hand side. RHS contains the input arguments and can contains nets, registers, constants, any value. So a continuous assignment models mostly combinational logic. For this to design the combinational logic circuits, we prefer this data flow model or continuous assignment model. Let us take some examples. Here I have written some assign f1 equal to a. That means whenever a changes, if this value is assigned to f1. Here 1 size of this data, b means bit type 0 is the value. That is f2 is assigned with the value 0. Similarly here we are choosing a hexadecimal value. Now F3 is assigned with the hexadecimal value AA of size 4. So when I choose the size 4 means actually A means 
normal in bit binary 10 that is 1010 so aa means its binary value is 1010101 so it is of 4 bits this size so let us consider another example like assign x is equal to a assign y is equal to b assign z is equal to c when simulated these three lines of verilog will make three separate signal assignments at the exact same time when you consider the normal programming high level language normally what happens in the because in the hardware description languages most of the executions are concurrent that's a parallel whereas in the normal high level language software language these are all sequential that i mean these instructions will be executed one after the other this is that's why here i have written this is different from programming language that will first assign a is equal to x then b is equal to y and finally c is equal to z whereas here all the three signals sub though they are separate they are assigned at the exactly same time because all these three are three separate assignment statements so that means so these are all concurrent that means they are executed or implemented parallelly so another important thing here is when you are doing like this every digital component or every logic gate will have some delay suppose i consider an end gate or a nand gate or not gate when i apply some input at the not gate a it will become a complement but between this a and a complement there will be a small amount of time that may be of nanoseconds time but how to indicate that time in the very lock codes that's why Verilog provides the ability to model gate delays. Every gate will have some delay that is of a very, very, very small value of nanoseconds. But still, while modeling, we have to show them through our continuous assignments. So for this purpose, a hash symbol is used to indicate the delayed assignment. So for example, when I say A is equal to B, so when A value is assigned by the value b that means after a small interval of time that is called the delay of the logic gate so that is indicated through this program by the symbol hash hash symbol so how to, that is there are various methods of denoting this delay suppose there is a single delay there will not be any problem it automatically indicates that the target will be assigned after a given interval of time time units suppose there are two delay parameters the first parameter is used for the rise time of delay while the second is used to model the fall time so similarly if there are three third parameter then next will be for the third will be for off transitions that is the most important thing so that is the third parameter always models the transition to off OFF let us see the example here first example assign hash 1 this will be the unit of time one unit of time f is equal to a what is the meaning of this the delay here is one unit of time that means after one unit of time a will be assigned to f Similarly, assign hash 2 comma 3 that is a delay of 2 for raising transitions, raising edge or positive edge going and 3 is assigned for falling edge. Similarly, 2, 3, 4, F is equal to A hash. Delay of 2 for rising, 3 for falling and 4 for all of transitions. So, that's how we indicate the gate delays in my very lock the most important one is the next model behavioral model so this model is based on the description of the behavior of a complex hardware components behavior of what how it behaves when signals are applied the behavioral description is done with the help of procedural constructs so as you have already seen in the earlier video that this there are two important procedural constructs one is our blocks as you have seen one is always block the other is initial block the statements inside these blocks are called
procedural statements. You have seen all the details in the earlier video. But anyhow, just to give some clarity, I have explained once again with brevity. The always block is a continuous loop. Remember always. The always block is a continuous loop. It never terminates. A Verilog module can contain any number of always blocks within a module. But one important thing is all these always blocks are executed concurrently. That means at the same time, parallelly. At a time t is equal to 0, they start executing. What will be the syntax of this always block? Always at sensitivity list. That is, people call this some expression also sometimes. That means whenever this changes, the sensitive list changes, or whenever this, suppose it is a condition, it is true, then only these statements are executed. These statements are executed. That means begin, end. If these state, if there are more than one statement, two or three statement, procedural statements, we always keep these statements between begin and end. Every block. It will start with begin, close with end. Let us see some more points. Verilog also supports keywords to limit triggering of the block. That's what I said here. So sometimes we may use in the bracket sensitivity list either for a triggering, either I may take a positive edge of the clock or negative negative edge of the clock. So that's why. And in Verilog 2001, there is another interesting thing. But star is also used so once we add this means instead of in a combination circuit instead of representing writing all the inputs simply it indicates that whenever any one of the input changes on this whatever the input may be if any one of the input change, that is it is it corresponds to all the inputs we need not represent all the inputs in detail that is the meaning so as an example we have taken 2 is to 1 max only to explain further here, normally a max will have only Q, but only to make you to understand, I have chosen one more output Q bar. That is a complement of this. As you know, when I consider a max, you will have two inputs and one select line. Just now we have seen in the case of gate level model also. So, example, a twist to one max module, as you know, the keyword, my max name of the module, this is the port list. A, B, S are inputs, Q and Q bar are the outputs. Same thing, directions are given here. Now let us see. Always at, as I already told you, always at A, R, B, R, S. What is the meaning of this? In this sensitivity list, if any one of the value changes, either A or B or S changes, begin, start. If yes, what is the meaning of this? If yes, yes is the select line. Whenever select line is true, S is high, select line is 1, then assign A is equal to Q, else assign B is equal to Q, out, end. So whenever there is a begin, it should be closed by end, begin and end. And I have written after that one more statement. This is assign Q is equal to negation of, that is, what is the meaning of this? This is a continuous assignment statement, that means this Q bar negation of this will be now Q. That means the output will be negative of that value. So that means if this is Q is 0, now it will become 1. That's how we write this always, or that's how we understand this always block. So the statements within the always. So if there are three always blocks, all the three always blocks will start at the same time but the statements within the always block are executed sequentially this is the most important thing so next one is initial block so the initial block is typically used to write a test bench for simulation it initializes the values which are useful for simulation so it specifies the stimulus to be applied to the device under test device under test DUT. The initial block is executed only once at the beginning of the simulation. That is the fundamental difference between always block and initial block. Always block may be executed in a loop any number of times. 
but the initial block is always executed only once during the simulation. An initial block is not used to model the synthesizable behavior. Remember, an initial block is only or always for simulation, not for explaining the behavior of the design. That is the most important thing that should be remembered. Here I have taken example for initial block module behavior some name a and b are the inputs initial begin so why initial begin because there are two statements here there are two statements n so a is assigned with one b is assigned with zero that's why initial that is these values are initiated the values of a and b are initiated which will be useful for simulation so this is the initial block then always so when I consider this always begin after 50 time units a negation of a inversion of a is assigned to a inversion of a is assigned to a that means if earlier a is equal to 1 it will become 0 after 50 time units again I have written one more always begin what we have done after 100 units of time make b count inversion complement of b to b that means earlier b was 0 now b will become 1 that means after 50 units of time a will become 0 b will become 1 this is simple program which explains the initial block that's how we understand the meaning of this so here i try to explain the meaning of these things how the values of a and b are initialized first as a rigid type a and b are initialized to a and 1 and then after a time interval of this how the values are that is how the values are assigned that is the reg value inverse after 50 time units and b is assigned after 100 time units that's what i have explained here next the last and most important or a kind of combination a kind of mixed modeling is the most widely used modeling is RTL modeling. What is this RTL? Register transfer level modeling. It refers to a level of design abstraction in which the designer use both behavioral and data flow assignments and the vector data is moved and operated on in a synchronous manner with respect to clock. In a synchronous manner, the data movement is done. What is the example for this? The best example is as the register transfer level. It explains how the data is transferred through the registers, register transfer level. Best example is your shift register. Or as a matter of fact, all these things, flip-flops, memory, etc., they are all registers. So this RTL model is widely used in designing data paths. Data path indicates how the data is being transferred or moved from one register to another. So those who are familiar with the digital electronics or digital design, you know that all these flip-flops, memories, etc. They are all registers basically, fundamentally registers. So a register is a higher level of abstraction that allows vector data. What is a vector data? You mean multiple bit. That means just now we have seen suppose 7 down 0. What is the meaning of this? It is a 8 bit data. Suppose I have a data bus, it will be 8 bit data bus. How do you indicate that? So 7 down 0 within square brackets. We have seen in the very lot data variables, we have seen that as vector. Similarly, address bus 16, 15 down 0. So let us take an example to understand this RTL model to explain the shift register as you have already seen a 4 bit 4 stage 8 bit shift register here so that means you will have the input data in and this is synchronous as I have told you that is at the clock edge of this this clock is applied synchronously to all the flip flops D flip flop as you can see here so this output will be D out 0 this will be D out 1 this will be d out 2, this will be d out 3. So once I give the data at the clock edge of this, this will become d out. After some, this will become d out 1. This will become out 2. Then 
that means d out 3 is nothing but d out 2 d out 2 is nothing but d out 1 d out 1 is nothing but d out 0 d out 0 is the first initial value so from this register transfer here the data is transferred through these registers that's why this model is called rtm model which is very 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 important for any beginner so to make it to understand clearly i have chosen a shift register let us see module example of course name of module is the keyword shift reg it is the name of the module what is the output here output reg 7 down 0 7 down 0 means as you have seen so it is a 8 bit data. output is all 8 bits so d out d210 all the outputs are 8 bit data that's why 7 down 0 what are these names 0 1 2 3 what is this input it is chosen as a where what are the inputs here cloth i have chosen another reset and deem deem means data in reset clock reset and clock these are all type wire so they are all single bit clock reset but data in is a 7 bit 8 bit sorry 8 bit you can see here so data in is also an 8 bit data the same so what we have written always at the passage of the clock or negative of the reset always at the passage token either this or this whenever these things happen begin if negative of reset that means when reset at the negative of the reset is true whenever it is whenever you reset then what should be the value whenever you reset this shift register all the values must be zero that's why d out zero is a 8 bit value zero 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 that means all the values are set to zero zero upon reset that is the meaning next else begin again d out zero is assigned d in d out zero is assigned to d1 d out one is assigned to d2 d out two is assigned to d3 yeah because for this begin and for the earlier begin yeah for this this is first one begin this is the end closed by this and for the module end module but here we have used continuous assignment because it is a synchronous the clock is that means this 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 all the four assignments this i have already explained as non-blocking assignments in my earlier video so all these values are assigned to this everything will take place at the same time t is equal to zero because as i have told you this is a synchronous shift register if you see the diagram the clock is applied to all the four registers synchronously that's why i have explained this with it is a 8 bit shift register synchronous or it is also known as serial to parallel converter because i am giving a serial data of something but i get the data here here parallel data serial to parallel so thank you for watching Good luck.